In this video, we're still looking at solving quadratics, but we're going to learn how to do this thing called evaluating the discriminant, which is kind of a process for determining the number of solutions to a quadratic. And so what we have is we really have three different categories of quadratics as far as number of solutions. Sometimes our quadratic has two solutions. Sometimes our quadratic has one solution. And sometimes our quadratic has zero solutions. And, and here's when this happens. So if I, if I look at my quadratic formula, which I've copied up here, this, this part that's under the radical, the b squared minus 4ac, we call that the discriminant, okay? And this part right here, it doesn't necessarily determine all of what your solutions are, but it does determine how many solutions there are. So just by doing this little part, you could say, okay, do we have two solutions, do we have one solution, or do we have zero solutions, okay? So for example, if that b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, that means you're going to have two solutions, if b squared minus 4ac equals 0, you're going to have one solution. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, you're going to have no solutions. We're going to look at them real quick on these three examples, and then we'll do a few more because I really want to um, give you some insight as to why this is the case. Why does this give us two solutions? Why does this give us one, and why does this give us 0? Well, here we go. So in this quadratic up here, uh, if we know a quadratic takes the form of ax squared, or I guess in this case we're using n, a n squared minus b n, and then we don't really have a c here. We don't really have a constant that equals 0. So we have an a value that is negative 7 and a, oops, a b value that is negative 8. So if we have a equals negative 7, b equals negative 8, and then c equals 0, let's come over and let's try our discriminant. If our discriminant is b squared, minus 4ac, in this case that would be negative 8 squared minus 4ac. Well, negative 8 squared is 64, and then I like this math because it's really easy because anything times 0 is going to give us 0, so 64 minus 0 is just 64. So what we have here is we have a discriminant, we have b squared minus 4c that's greater than 0. It is positive, Therefore, we're going to have two solutions, okay? The reason why is if we come up here to our quadratic formula and I take the square root of 64, that would give us an 8, meaning we would add 8 to get one solution, but we would subtract 8 to get a different solution. So any positive value here is going to yield two solutions because you'd add it and it would give you one value and you'd subtract it and it would give you a different value. That's how we get the two solutions from the plus or minus. Now, let's look at our second example. So for this one, it looks like our A value is 1. It looks like our B value is negative 6. And then it looks like our C value is 9. So if I'm looking, investigating my discriminant, and we do B squared minus 4AC, we are going to do negative 6 squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 9. Negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times 1 times 9 is going to be negative 36. And 36 minus 36 is 0. This means if our discriminant equals 0, that this quadratic has one solution. It doesn't mean the solution is 0 necessarily, but it means that there's one solution. And the reason why is this. Let's come back up to our quadratic formula. If this entire value I've highlighted is 0, and you take the square root of 0... That means this entire value is just a big zero. And what happens when you add zero versus when you subtract zero? And hopefully you're saying, okay, well, if I take any number and I add zero, and I take that same number and subtract zero, it doesn't make any difference. Adding and subtracting zero does not change your value. So you're really only going to get one solution from all this because the plus or minus isn't going to give you two different values. Okay? And let's jump down to our third example. In our third example, let's see, we have an A... We got an a value of negative 10. We got a b value of negative 1. And I'm going off the page a little bit, but a c value of negative 9. So if I do b squared minus 4ac, we have b squared minus 4ac, okay? And that's just going to become a 1 because negative 1 squared is 1. And then 
let's see, 90 times 4. I think all this, if you punch in the calculator, would be 1 minus 360, or in other words, negative 359. Now, the reason, uh, oh, and so just to recap, that doesn't mean that this is the solution to the quadratic, but it means that because this value is negative, because our discriminant is less than 0, this quadratic is going to have 0 real solutions. Okay, I should emphasize the real solutions part. Because if I come up here, if you recall, we can't really take the square root of a negative. <coughs> Excuse me. Because any number times itself is going to yield a positive number. This is where those, I, this is where those um, imaginary numbers come into play. You're taking the square root of a negative, you will have zero real solutions.